the 1947 fire at Christchurch Ballantyne's department store is the worst in New Zealand history, killing 41 people. In 1947, J. Ballantyne and company employed over 300 employees at their department store on the intersection of Colombo and Cashel Streets in the heart of Christchurch. At 3.31 p.m. on 18 November 1947, a female employee informed one of the store's salesmen that smoke was creeping up the stairs. The smoke was emanating from Congreve's building cellar, which was beneath the furnishing department, but there were no flames or sounds of burning. He instructed the woman to contact the fire department and inform the owners. The owners, Kenneth and Roger Ballantyne, had been informed of the fire above, but there was considerable doubt over whether a call to the fire department had been made. At 3.46 p.m., the fire station received this call. The firemen first believed it was a cellar fire. They were unaware that individuals were trapped on the building's higher stories. The fire department was understaffed at the time, and the two senior officials were not on duty. It was decided not to bring a turntable ladder to the location of the incident since a cellar fire was not often viewed as serious. The fire officer in command quickly recognized the fire's seriousness and dispatched a firefighter to make a brigade call, which would activate all of Christchurch's fire appliances. However the call was delayed due to congested telephone lines. Meanwhile, it took an additional 10 minutes for firemen to locate the source of the fire. Several heads of departments took the initiative to evacuate their personnel from the building's top floors. The credit department's office staff waited for the office machinery to shut down before attempting to go through the fire escape, but were unable to do so due to the smoke and heat. Two ladies attempted the fire escape once again but were unable to access it due to the office's roof collapsing. The women went out the window and leapt to a balcony on the first level. They were rescued from there by firemen. The fire claimed the lives of the ladies who remained in the workplace. Another woman leapt from a third-floor window, colliding into the veranda before falling on the street. She died shortly afterwards as a result of her injuries. The employees on the second level of the dressmaking area escaped by taking the stairs and exiting the building just as the top portions of the structure began to fall. The eight ladies in the millinery department had delayed their departure due to their ignorance of the threat. Only the supervisor and one member of the department's employees successfully made their way to and down the fire escape. The remaining seven perished after collapsing as a result of smoke inhalation.
outside, firemen fought in vain to extinguish the flames. They were able to rescue Kenneth Ballantyne after he smashed a window and climbed onto the building's parapet. By this time, almost 200 firemen were battling the blaze with 20 apparatus, but they were making little progress. By 6 p.m., firefighters, police officers, and volunteers could begin searching for victims in the burned ruins. By 8 p.m., the flames were entirely extinguished. The final bodies were removed from the structure on November 21st. The blaze claimed the lives of 41 individuals. The shop itself was comprised of seven smaller structures connected together and reached a height of four stories in certain areas. Certain areas of the structure lacked fire exits. A veranda wrapped around the exterior of the building, making it difficult for fire crews to erect their ladders. Initially, firemen used shorter ladders that were unable to reach the windows on the top stories. This resulted in a delay in the attempted rescue of the trapped personnel. There were no fire sprinklers, and portions of the structure were lined with wooden match lining and pinex, both of which are very combustible. On the 23rd of November, a civic funeral ceremony was performed at the Anglican Cathedral, followed by a mass burial. The funeral was the largest in Christchurch's history. Two months later, in Christchurch, a commission of inquiry into the catastrophe was established. The committee determined that there were insufficient qualified police on the site of the incident, and that efforts to rescue the trapped workers lacked coordination and direction. The structure was dangerous and did not comply with city construction codes, despite the fact that it had been inspected and passed four years prior. The store's management seems not to have taken the fire danger seriously enough. There was no emergency plan in place and no training provided to workers on what to do in the case of a fire. The panel proposed improvements to New Zealand's fire prevention and firefighting systems. Additionally, it suggested immediate revisions to construction codes and fire safety measures in order to prevent another such catastrophe.